Right, so what are the best phones you can buy for under 350 USD right now? I'm saving what I think maybe is the best till last. So make sure you watch till the end to find out which one that is. Right, so what I've done is taken 350 USD, converted that into Chinese RMB. It's about 2,000 300 RMB. Obviously living in China, these are the phones and the prices that I have access to. All right, let's start off with the Honor 10 GT edition. This one comes in at 2,199 RMB right now in China. Now this is a pretty powerful phone, although you do have to give up some of the more modern design aspects. So you get a 5.8 inch LCD screen, not the biggest screen amongst the group of phones that I'm talking about, but I definitely don't have any complaints with it. Now, on the front of the foam, you still have a, a pretty big bezel at the bottom, so much so that they've been able to fit a fingerprint sensor down there. Now, some people may see this as bad, some people may see this as good. If you want a more modern design, obviously that big bezel with the fingerprint sensor isn't what you're gonna be looking for. But if you really don't care about a bezel down there, that bottom fingerprint sensor is extremely convenient and you know that that technology has been around for a while. It's gonna be very quick and accurate in unlocking the phone. One of the big benefits of this phone is that you get a flagship processor in here. Honor includes the Kirin 970 chipset. This is Huawei's chipset, obviously Huawei own Honor. Now the 970 isn't the very latest chipset, that is the 980, but this is the predecessor of the 980. So it is a little bit older, but it is still a flagship chipset. And because of that, you get some really good options in terms of video and power. So this phone is capable of shooting 4K video. Not every phone in the range can do that. And that's thanks to having that flagship chipset in there, albeit a slightly older one. You get a 16 megapixel main camera on the back there. You also get a 24 megapixel black and white camera. The front camera is a 24 megapixel camera and the battery is 3,400 milliamp hours. So with this phone, essentially what you're doing is giving up more of the more modern design aspects that we've come accustomed to in newer phones. You're getting a slightly older chip, but because it was flagship at the time, it gives you a lot more power and a lot more options with what you can do. Another thing that you do have to give up is the amount of storage that you get. This has six gigs of RAM, but only 64 gigabytes of storage. Now this phone is more expensive because of that chipset. You have to give up some other aspects of the phone. Moving on to the Honor 10 Lite. This essentially is the reverse of the Honor 10 GT. This one is actually cheaper. It is 1,800 and 99 RMB here in China. You get six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. If you think you're gonna shoot loads of videos and loads of photos and want to put a ton of apps on the phone, then you might wanna go with a phone with more storage options. You can also put an SD card in here as well to give it even more memory. Now the Honor 10 Lite has a much more modern design than the Honor 10 GT. On the front there, you have a small bezel at the bottom, but certainly nowhere near as big as the Honor 10 GT. And at the top there, you just have a very small U-shaped notch for the camera. It feels just a bit more modern in the design. The fingerprint sensor has been moved to the middle at the back of the phone. The screen is also a lot bigger than the Honor 10 GT. You get a 6.2 inch screen, but really the size of the actual phone is pretty much the same. Because the bezels are smaller, you get a bigger screen in about the same body. You get a 13 megapixel camera on the back, there is a two megapixel depth sensor there. There's no images from that. I'm really not sure how much that actually helps with imaging. But anyway, so far, so good. It seems like a very good competitor to the Honor 10 GT. It's cheaper and you get more memory and the design is definitely more modern. The battery is also exactly the same size. 3,400 milliamp hours. The front camera is also 24 megapixel. The main difference in this one is you just don't get the more high powered processor. So this one uses the Kirin 710 chipset. This is obviously a step down from the more flagship grade 
970 or the more modern 980. It's from the same family. Obviously, these are both Honor branded Huawei phones, but obviously because you get that slight step down in the chipset, the phone becomes cheaper. Also because the chipset isn't the flagship grade, the video you get out of the phone isn't 4K, it's just 1080p. But really, to be honest, for the vast majority of people, 1080p is plenty anyway. Right, moving away from the Honor brand, but keeping with a Huawei phone. So this is the Huawei 9 Plus, or if you're outside of China, I think it's called the Huawei Y9. I see this phone as like a compromise between the Honor 10 GT and the Honor 10 Lite. The design for me is somewhere in the middle of those two. It is a modern design. There's a small bezel at the bottom you get a slightly bigger notch at the top there. It actually has two imaging units there. It's slightly more expensive than the Honor 10 Lite at 1,000 999. You get six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. You can get cheaper options as well, but I pushed that up and we're still within the price range. Now where this one differs is that it actually has a really big screen. It's six and a half inches, which is the biggest screen of any of the phones in this video. Maybe if you watch a lot of videos or some TV on your phone, you might wanna go for this over the other options. Other than that, this phone is pretty much the same as the Honor 10 Lite. You get a Kirin 710 processor in this one, 13 megapixel plus two megapixel camera at the back, 1080p video recording. As I said, that front camera is just a little bit different, getting a 16 megapixel selfie camera with a two megapixel auxiliary unit. But this phone actually has the biggest battery of any of the phones in this video at 4,000 milliamp hours. So even though the performance might not be much different from the Honor 10 Lite, you get a bigger screen and a bigger battery. It is an LCD screen, not an AMOLED, so it's probably a good thing that there's a bigger battery in this considering the screen is bigger. So moving away from Huawei now, I've chosen the Oppo R15X. This is right at the top of the range. This is 2,299 RMB here in China. But this phone definitely gives you some features that you can't find in any of those Huawei phones. So a really, really cool feature of the Oppo R15X is that it has an underscreen fingerprint sensor. It means that the Oppo R15X doesn't have anything on the back there taking away from the design and nothing on the front either. The bezels are really small and it has a tiny notch on the top of the screen for the camera. I personally just really like the design of the R15X and I really like how it feels. It just feels like a good solid phone. Another awesome feature of this phone in particular is that it has an AMOLED screen. I much prefer AMOLEDs over LCDs for sure. The colors should be more contrasty, very, very deep blacks, and it should be better for battery life as well. So you get a 6.4 inch AMOLED display and a 3,600 milliamp hour battery. Considering the screen size and the battery size, you should get some really good battery life out of this phone. Now Oppo still use a micro USB charging port it seems a little bit strange they put such a modern feature in there with the fingerprint sensor and then they keep an old style micro usb connector for the charger you get a 16 megapixel camera on the back plus a 2 megapixel auxiliary unit on the front you get a 25 megapixel selfie camera and actually you get 4k recording with this phone as well i think the big advantages of this phone are of course that fingerprint sensor and of course the AMOLED screen. I just think that AMOLED just creates a better looking screen than LCD. This one also comes with six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. There's no card support in this one for external storage, but 128 is probably enough. Now the processor in here is a Snapdragon 660. Definitely not the most powerful Snapdragon. So on this phone, you're paying really for that expensive AMOLED screen, the expensive fingerprint sensor. And so you have to give up a little bit by getting a slightly lower powered processor. Again, depending on how you use the phone and what you use the phone for, you may like to go for the Oppo or you may wanna choose one of the others in the video. Right, so as I said at the beginning of the video, I've saved the last one the one that I would probably choose till last. I just think the specs and especially everything that it just gives you in one phone, especially for the price, for me just make a lot of sense. And there probably aren't too many people that are surprised that it comes from Xiaomi. Now I would have loved to have just said it was the Mi 9, but unfortunately the Mi 9 is just too expensive. So I've chosen the little brother 
the Mi 9 SE. It brings over all the incredible design features from the Mi 9. It's basically just a smaller version of that. Awesome colors, amazing screen to body ratio, modern design on the front there. You've just got the small water drop notch at the top. The screen is just really, really great. It's a good quality screen as well as just being an AMOLED, which I think it just looks better than an LCD. You get more contrast. And also on the Xiaomi, you can use dark modes in a lot of the Xiaomi apps, which is gonna save on battery life. It has a modern USB-C type charging connector, which none of the other phones in this video have, except for the Honor 10 GT. You can't put an SD card in there to expand the storage, but within the price range, we can get the six gig version with 128 gigs of storage, which is probably gonna be enough for everybody. I wouldn't say the screen on this is small, but certainly if you're someone who prefers bigger screens, then you might wanna go with the the Y9 from Huawei. But here's the thing, do you give up half an inch of screen real estate to get what I believe to be the best camera out of all of these phones? On the back there, you get a triple camera setup. You get a 48 megapixel main camera, a telephoto, and an ultra wide. None of the other phones in this list give you anything close to that. The Mi 9 SE's cameras aren't as good as the Mi 9, they're a little bit of a step down, but you get all the same functionality. You get a zoom lens and an ultra wide lens. It just makes perfect sense for me to have that sort of camera setup. It's got a Snapdragon 712 processor in there, which allows it to shoot 4K video as well. And it has pretty good electronic image stabilization. It's got a 3000 milliamp hour battery, certainly not the biggest, but the screen is smaller and it's an AMOLED as well. So you'll get pretty good battery life out of this phone. All in all, I just think the Xiaomi Mi 9 SE at this price point makes so much sense.